Peg Newhauser has been in the business of management and organizational change for more than 18 years. As a consultant with degrees in both psychology and sociology, combined with her practical experience working in the corporate world, she brings a fresh perspective. Targeting areas like conflict resolution, mediation, and dealing with difficult people, Peg uses culture as a means of implementing corporate change. Highly respected in her field, Peg has been featured in and written for journals, magazines, and newspapers all over the world. Culture.com, Building Corporate Culture in the Connected Workplace, was co-authored by Peg Newhauser. She's also written Corporate Legends and Lore, as well as Tribal Warfare in Organizations, Turning Tribal Conflict into Negotiated Peace. Tribal Warfare in Organizations. In addition to being the title of Peg's first book, Tribal Warfare is Real. Sooner or later, it happens in every organization, and Peg Newhauser knows how to deal with it. What I have discovered over the years, uh, from my background in sociology and then working in organizations once I got out in the world, is that we're just as tribal as we ever were in terms of our behavior. And that's what I'm going to talk about this a lunch time with you and give you some tips and some thoughts and ideas about how to deal with that. I would certainly say, as Rich was saying, it's not the kind of thing you want to give up on and just assume it's always going to be that way. Um, although the bad news, I guess, maybe is it is always going to be that way because that's human nature. It's been with us forever. And so it's always something that you have to face and deal with. I think the solution, however, is not necessarily to ignore it, because it can get worse, frankly, if you do that, but, also, but just basically to kind of um, whittle away at it is often how I think of it, is you're always trying to push as far as you can of creating some linkages and bridges between people, knowing that the reality is of how people are and groups are, there's always going to be a struggle, there's always going to be differences of opinion, and frankly, that's probably not a bad thing because some of the best ideas you'll get in any organization are if you can stand it in terms of dealing with the differences in the, and the frictions that occur and figure out how to get the both, best of both or all the different groups you deal with. I often think of it as you want the best out of the collective IQ of the group you're working with. So my last tip and piece of advice to you as I close today will be around about humor as I'm sure all of you have discovered many times in your career, sometimes if you can make people laugh, that'll just cut the tension like nothing else will. And there's a terrific story, it's a true story, it's part of why I like it, that a man named Nirenberg tells. He does negotiations work and has written a lot of books about it. And the story is about, a, he was in a conference room with a client sitting on one side of the conference table and they were in a negotiation. The man was there from the other company sitting on the other side of the table and they reached a deadlock. And it was a very angry deadlock. So the man from the other company was furious, leaped out of his chair, grabbed his briefcase, turned on his heel, stormed out of the door, and slammed the door behind him. Boom. Very dramatic exit from the room. The people sitting at the table just stared at the door and were stunned because they knew the man had just walked into the closet <laughs> of the conference room. This is a true story. Now, I, this could happen to any of us in this room. Can you imagine? I'd die. I would die. Well, they just sat there at the table, stunned. Nobody said a word. You know, they were all just paralyzed, staring at the door because there was no sound, no movement, nothing. About a minute went past. Finally, the door flung open. The guy leaped out, still carrying his briefcase, and yelled, ta-da! <laughs> I mean, what else would you do? He came back over and sat down, and they reached an agreement in 10 minutes. True story. Culture.com. It's a clicks and mortar world. Traditional companies are constantly struggling to play catch up. Success comes to those that are willing to bridge the gap between the old and new ways of doing business. The CEO of the company, Charles Morgan, told me this story, and it has a name. It's the 100 days story at Axion. And it had just finished at the time I interviewed him. And he said what happened was they were working on a 
product development that had taken forever. It bogged down. It was really important to the future of the company. So one day when he was meeting with some of the key engineers, just off the top of his head, he said to him, how about if we just set a goal, say we'll finish it in 90 days, and just do whatever we have to do to pull that off. And they all kind of looked at him like he was nuts. They started talking about it. And somebody had a calendar and noticed that from t today's date, uh, September 1, I believe, was 100 days out. And they finally said, well, how about 100 days? Give us 100 days and we'll do it. And Charles said, a deal. And then he joined the teams. They organized a bunch of teams and they went for it. And we talk in the book about all the lessons learned from the 100 days project. But it was a roaring success. They accomplished it with their goal within 100 days. And the interesting thing, they accomplished far more than their goal, way more than the standards they set for themselves. And some of their processes, they, they took something like 98% of the steps out of processes that were involved from an engineering point of view. It was amazing, the descriptions of it. But he said the thing that was so important about culture is it caught on throughout the entire company. This is about 2,500 people in this company. And he said all over the company, with no one asking them to, people started setting 100-day time frames for projects that ordinarily would have taken a lot longer than that in HR, in marketing, in all different areas of the company, not just the engineers. And it became a new norm, a new way of doing things in the company. So it had an impact on the speed and the pacing with which they did everything. One of the most important traits that you have as an individual to survive and thrive in this clicks and mortar world is curiosity, just plain and simple curiosity. The people who are doing well at this point in time aren't the people who know everything and are the ultimate techies, because we have a lot of technology people in the audience today, and every one of them can tell you how quickly even they can become outdated and have to keep updating what they know and how things work and what the skills are. So you, there's no way to learn it all and know it all and have arrived on this topic. So the constant willingness to not know the answer and keep asking and looking and experimenting and playing around with things. If you think of the theme through all the things I say to you in the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to hear a constant drumbeat of that need for being curious. And I would suggest to you, if you have a relatively high level of curiosity about all this, you'll do just fine.